In this video, we will take this non clean data and convert it to clean version with just two columns. Why is this data not clean? Because it has too many columns. And if you remember our 10 rules for clean data, the first rule is violated. Each column must have a heading. Here, create, store, execute are not headings, they are actually data. They should be in a column of their own and the column should be called category. And then all the apps should have their own column. Now, because I got the data like this, do I have to copy paste multiple times to clean it up? Absolutely not. You know what to do. Use Power Query. First of all, close this file, create a blank new file, then go to data, get data from file Excel and select that file. Select the table, click on transform data and now Power Query will start. We have many columns and we need to append all of those one below another. And while doing that, we also want to pick up the headers and then create a separate column for them. This may sound like a very complex multi-step activity, but in reality, Power Query has made it so simple. All that you have to do is select all the columns. Control A works. Now right click in the selection and just one option you have to choose, unpivot columns and it's done. Amazing, isn't it? So this is the right time to subscribe because you're going to learn many such amazing things almost every day. If you have used unpivot before, usually we have one column which is good and many columns which are bad. In traditional unpivot, we select the good column and unpivot the bad columns. In this case, all our columns were bad. That's why we selected all of them and unpivoted them. Unpivot always creates attribute and value columns. We simply rename them to category and app. Also, it's a good idea to select the category column and sort it in ascending or descending order. Remember, there could be duplicate apps. Whether to keep them or remove duplicates is your choice depending on the requirement. So let's import this data. Close and load to. Depending on the context and the size of the data you choose, whether it should go into a table or a data model. In this case, I'm going to import it in a table. This is perfect, but all of us know data is never static. After some time, the original data is going to change. So let's open the original file and simulate a change. Save the file, close the file, and you know what to do. Right click on this and say refresh and the new items will be incorporated. One additional touch of finesse you can think of is, do I have to refresh this every time manually? What if I forget to refresh tomorrow? I am going to be seeing outdated results. So I don't want to rely on my memory to refresh. So what do I do? If you can see this pane here, you can right click on the query and go to properties and refresh data when opening the file. If this pane is closed, no problem. Right click inside the table, go to table, external data properties, and then click on this button. This is called query properties. Again, the same option is available here. Third place is go to data tab. And there also you have the data range properties, which is essentially the same. Also notice, in case this data was coming from a list or some other data source, which was being updated while your Excel file was open, then you can say refresh every n number of minutes. And the fastest you can do it, highest frequency available is one minute. Everything I showed you in Power Query will work in Power BI as well. The method of refreshing is a little different in Power BI. So try this out and let me know if it works for you. If you have any queries or if you have ideas for future videos, do let me know in comments. Share this with as many people as you can. Let everyone become more efficient. So that's it for now. See you next time. Thank you.